and do your best, okay? Do your best to this one, okay. Um, when the pandemic first started, it was just this shock to the system, right? And, and life as I knew it was no longer. I had no idea what was coming next, what to do with myself. Um, it was scary and I felt depressed and anxious and just uncertain all the time. There's been so much uncertainty. I think I've really had to rely and had to develop um, patience and acceptance. You kind of let go of the things that are unnecessary in your life and you also hold on to the things that are good in your life. And it Due to the technology, we are just in our phones only. And this pandemic has made us reunited and we can talk to our parents or we can talk to people which we don't connect. So you see the things that you love and the things that make sense in your life and help you focus on what you do want in your life and things that you didn't have time for before that were taken for granted, you really appreciate more when you don't have it. First, we would think that uh, please, uh, the school, every day of schools, we like Sunday, but now when we see that it is every day like a holiday, then it is so boring. What I have learned from the pandemic is that when we want to, humans can be incredibly supportive of each other, even for perfect strangers. You know, there's hope that maybe if people really pull together that we can really get things accomplished. I made 500 masks because I felt that was the least that I could do is to help um, an organization make masks and pass them out to whoever needed it. It wasn't just hospitals, anybody who would walk into the store and say, I need some masks and they were available for them. Just in our general neighborhood and our community, that there has been much more of an effort to help one another. My biggest takeaway is how much we need each other. We need to work together and connect. Life has strange ways. One day I was lying down and thinking about how isolated I feel, how disconnected with the world and stifled. And just like that, a thought came to me that why don't I connect all the people that I know in different countries to come together and dance. And um, that led to a flash mob, a virtual flash mob that had about 80 people participating from around the world. Once that was over, then I thought, what's next? Let's continue dancing. And um, so I came up with the idea of Dance is One. The Dance is One project has been lovely because it's uh, given me a chance to continue the dancing and to connect with people, even though I was not able to go outside and dance. I have a rare genetic disorder, so I had to get knee surgery. I was out of dance and uh, theater till then. And uh, when this opportunity came, I was very excited to start dancing again. Um, I enjoyed dancing with one because um, with Elizabeth living in Colorado, she did not want us coming down to her because she says we are old and didn't want us getting sick. So doing this with her, um, I get to see her, we get to do something together. So I have enjoyed doing this. And I have not really ever danced before, but dance has lit a fire inside of me and it's made me really excited. I've just really wanted to go outside of my comfort zone and get to learn different things and connect with different people. I um, have never been a big dancer, but now I've gotten to do so much dancing and I really love to dance, I love moving, and I love music and rhythms. Through dancing, we are so, uh, we are so, we feel so light. So we can uh, take out the dress, uh, this distress from us and we can have something, uh, something lively to do. Almost done. Now we'll do a fun one, I call it the Statue of Liberty. Straight up with your feet. In. Watch me do this. We're walking forward. One, two, three, four. Boom, ta, ta. Boom, ta, ta. Meeting the Pali Bee, working with Roshni, learning such new dance forms. It's really, you know, helped me sail through happily. Um, through this pandemic. So yeah, thank you so much for that.
Even though we could not see each other in person, the energy was palpable and we all felt connected through dance. In Parkinson's disease, dance is used as a therapy towards these patients. I mean, it improves their well-being, it, it improves their posture, they're able to walk better. So one can really imagine that if uh, for people suffering with these uh, motor disabilities, if it helps them, what does dance do for a normal human being? I think one of the reasons I dance, one of the benefits is that it's physically so good for me. Uh I have been dancing since I was a child, probably right after I learned how to walk or even before. And for me, dance is the thing I've always done that just makes me happy and lets me be my true self. It makes me happy, I feel peace, and it makes my spirit be free. I, I've kept my, you know, my hand, my body in dancing pretty much uh, all my life. Just find it a great way to exercise and, you know, try to stay young and enjoy myself while I'm exercising. So when I get sad or depressed or whatever, I always put music on because it's, um, it calms me and it makes me feel good. And I uh, just jive to it. Makes us uh, 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 uh. happy. It makes you happy? Yeah. Happy. Um, music speaks to my soul um, and I just think that that dancing is such a great way to um, express yourself. I like to tell people that although I have a great grandchild, I also tap dance. Like I don't do everything perfectly for sure, but just like learning and moving and, and feeling the rhythms and connecting with people, um, it's just, it's a really joyful process. Just do that just a Stitch bit quicker, five, six, seven, and point, open, roll, step through. You know, your mind is used too. Um, you have to think, you have to memorize, you have to count. And they say that's good for old people to do, have activities like that in their brain. So this is going to be the beat. So it's going to be five, six, seven, eight, and one, and three, and five, six, seven, eight. Of course, we had some kind of, some difficulties. Uh, one was just juggling and trying to work out Zoom. And then people were in different time zones. So we had to create two, two times for dancing. So one that would have uh, people from India and uh, Europe come, and then one um, that would have people from East Coast to the West Coast be able to come. Then the lockdown was lifted and we were able to reopen our kids, youth and women's group in the park. Where do we go from now? We don't know, but I, I do think that um, I have a kind of plan of what I want to do in the fall and not just have dance, but also have other uh, performing arts media to be part of it. My future goals for myself are just to continue to be happy, continue to be enjoying and trying new things in my life, hopefully get back out and traveling and seeing the world some more. I just hope to remain healthy so that I can watch my four grandchildren grow and thrive. Be able to still perform and um, I hope the world can still appreciate the arts. I got a new job that is uh, that reflects my values and uh, helping society in some way and help using my abilities. <laughs> I, I work on mental disorders. I want that, you know, the world should be more accepting towards people suffering with these problems. That I, I hope I may be able to play a small part a small role in, in, you know, having a more inclusive world. I think in the short term, for me, the future means a glimmer of hope. And just to be there for one another. And I think that is probably the most important thing. 
I felt called to write a play about that experience of just the world stopping because of this pandemic and then my own awakening process that I think many white people probably share. And, and I hope that, that it's a small part of us moving forward collectively as, a, as humanity to, to solve this problem together. Even, you know, global warming, if they would realize that the, the climate uh, situation is a crisis, I think we could stop that too, you know, work is one, right? Dance is one, work is one. Be safe, go out and do things, but be safe about it. That's what, that's what I see, that's what I want. I hope that I can be my true self, knowing that I am loved, that I'm valued, seeding seeds in life of other people so that they know that they are loved and that they are valued. Just be the best person I can be and not be afraid to try new things and be creative and Never stop learning. I think learning and being open to new experiences is the key. Show me what you got. Oh,